Good evening. I'd like to call to order this business meeting for the Cave Creek Unified School District. It is, six, it is Tuesday, November 19th, and it is 6 p.m. I'd like to introduce James Arrington, our student leader of the month. He will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, so please stand. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item 1.3, roll call. All members of the board are present. From the cabinet, we have Dr. Pletnick, Dr. Hendrickson, Dr. Jensen, and Mr. Dolezal. Item 1.4, formal adoption of the agenda. Are the, is there a motion? So moved. Second. Are there any uh, changes anybody wants to make? Are you talking about like the 3.5 and all that fun stuff? The call Item 1, you want to move that? Yeah, 3.5. Okay. You want to move it before action consent or just after? Whenever. Okay. Well, we'll do it just after. Okay. Okay. Hang on. I'm easy. All right. All right. Um, all in favor of the agenda as amended, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Um, item 1.5, President's Report. Well, it has been a, seems like a long time since the last time we had a business meeting. But since the last meeting, I've uh, attended the business partners breakfast, and I had the honor of attending the prize patrol with CCUEF, and congratulations to all of the teachers who were awarded money from CCUEF. Um, I also attended a ESS parent council meeting, uh, the superintendent cadre, and I was at the powder puff game that supported cancer and kudos to all of the students who put in time for that. Um, I was at the homecoming game and I had the honor of doing the coin toss. However, Cactus Shadows was honoring Taylor Luan who was being inducted into the uh, Cactus Shadows Hall of Fame. So I uh, gave my coin tossing duties over to Taylor since I figured he had a little more experience with that than I do. Um, and I also was at the governing board candidate forum and I'd like to congratulate Dan, Brianna and Jeff for their winning the uh, election and they'll be back in January on our board. And that's all I have. So congratulations. Um, Item 1.6, board comments. Gonna go? Yeah, it's been busy since our last board meeting. Um, got to participate in the parent barbecue at Sonoran Trails, and that's always a highlight, I think, for or embarrassment for your child to see you at their lunch and show up um, unannounced, but always a highlight, and it's great to see Superintendent Dolezal flipping burgers and hot dogs, and so that's always fun. Um, Attended some Palm fundraisers, the PTO Oktoberfest at Harold's. Um, Harold's is always a great partner of ours for the district, so I always appreciate their support with that. Um, the business partner breakfast, also our monthly breakfast for um, Teacher of the Month. And then um, got to witness the girls' high school volleyball game, which is super fun. Um, they did great this season. Finished um, our mountain bike team, went to state, and included the middle school teams this year, which was also great. Um, Allison Reamer, she's a sophomore, um, did place second for at state as well, which was an amazing accomplishment for the team. And that's after she ran the cross country state the day before. And then also finished up October with um, Cactus Shadow High School's performance of Alice in Wonderland. So that was fun. Um, it's just been busy. So lots of fun things happening in the district. Uh, let's see. What did we do? We, well, I did attend the uh, business breakfast as well, uh, and also the employee of the month breakfast, so breakfast has been a good thing. Um, I did also get to do the coin toss. It was at the senior game. We won't talk about the outcome of the senior game, except it was a really good coin toss. Uh, um, <laughs> so, But other than that, it was really good, so 
I uh, believe that's all I had for those three things. All right. Um, it was busy since then. So Oktoberfest um, hit, hit a couple of the uh, cheer uh, car washes, which was fun raising money for our, uh, our cheer folks. Um, went to the teen dating violence fine arts talk, which that was very informative. Powder puff game, that was actually pretty comical. By the way, if you like corn, that corn roast is really good. Um, and some of you guys missed out because there's still plenty of corn. Um, so we got to do a better job of showing up to that. Um, homecoming parade, uh, first year kind of getting that back on track. Uh, what an amazing event. For those that came out and supported, thank you. That was a lot of fun. The kids definitely enjoyed it. Um, student cadre, I, I, that was probably one of my favorites. When you get to listen to the students ask you questions and you know hold you to court, that's always fun. Um, they asked some good ones too in an election season, funny enough. Um, business breakfast, um, spirit line showcase, our cheer, cheer team's off to a good start this year. Um, comps are good. Uh, my favorite though was, uh, imprints of honor was at the, uh, cave Creek veterans, um, showing the, uh, out there at the, uh, sundial. And that was actually the stories that we had a, um, prisoner of war out there and he shared his story of what he went through. Um, that definitely puts life in perspective pretty quick. Um, and then just to wrap up, just a quick highlight. Um, Coach Dixon this year, what a phenomenal job with the football team. Uh, Rob Gilmore is our AD. If you guys haven't met Mr. Gilmore, he's a phenomenal individual, and he's done a lot for our programs and has really elevated that up. Uh, Mr. DeVore, leading Spanish. I got uh, an opportunity a while back to go to the class, but just continuing to hear his name and the efforts that he puts into helping our kids. Uh, and then Mr. Cupo. I mean, obviously near and dear because my daughter's in theater, but uh, when you think of these shows that they put on and, and the effort that they do, it's been pretty good. So I kind of want to add highlighting some of our great staff as we do our highlights of the uh, time we're here. So thank you. All right. Um, yes. Yeah, so. <laughs> thank you very much. Oh, kidding. Kidding. Um, it was busy, so attended the student cadre event. That was awesome, and as Dan said, it was especially interesting during an election cycle and talking about all the things. It's always great to hear from the kids, and I encourage all the parents, you know, make that your dinner time discussion with them about the district and being involved and just being aware of what goes on. I was always, just like last year, super impressed with the intelligence and skill level of these kids and the way they address adults and the way they pay attention and address issues. So that's always fun to see what we're producing because, um, of course, that's the goal is our end product. Um, I had the opportunity to work the homecoming concessions booth <laughs> where I cooked, bagged, and sold 184 bags of popcorn. I will never be homeless because I will always have a career in popcorn bagging. So now I know that much. Um, but that was a great game, and it was also fun. I w as I was uh, sharing with uh, Superintendent Dolezal, it was so rewarding. I kept hearing, as I was back there, I kept hearing all these super polite people ordering, oh, you know, please may I have that, and thank you so much, and all of it. And I wasn't even looking for that, but all of a sudden, you know how something just keeps showing up, and I became very aware of it. And so I started paying attention, and it was all the students, I mean, not that the parents weren't nice too, but it was just, again, another thing that was so rewarding to hear the, just such a polite overall general nature of our students again. So good job, parents, good job, teachers. I think we're, we're doing a good job with that. Um, also attended the um, community partners breakfast. I think we had a, a full house. I think all of us were in, ten, in attendance and um, congratulations to the choir and Mrs. Dolezal, our choir director, they did an awesome presentation with, I don't remember the name of it, but it was something about selfie. I just call it the selfie song, but they were really highlighting um, this. You know, this is a constant distraction from relationships and school and all of that, but it was a really, it was funny, but it was very impactful too when you really paid attention to it and the message that they made with that was awesome. Um, also attended the candidates forum and also want to congratulate our three returning board members. Um, they did a great job up there and again expressed where we've been as a district, where we are, and our goals for the future to move us forward. And um, I think that's it. Okay. We've been busy. Yeah. Item 1.7, superintendent's report. 
President Busby, members of the board, uh, I too had the opportunity to attend the Carefree Veterans Day celebration, our Catch of Shadows High School Imprints of Honor Club, formerly called Veterans Heritage Project, uh, was in attendance as they continue to get veteran stories into their Since You Asked publication so they are never forgotten. Uh, the keynote speaker was actually a Cactus Shadows alumni and former member of VHP, U.S. Marine Captain Sophia Ripka. Uh, congratulations to the Cactus Shadows girls golf team for winning the Division II state championship. Congratulations to Ayana Moffitt for defending her title in diving and bringing home a second state championship. Cactus Shadows early signing day ceremony was on November 13th. Congratulations to the following student athletes who signed with their chosen college. Carter Brown, baseball at Pepperdine. Trey Shaman, basketball at Embry-Riddle. Cardi Bamer, wrestling at Grandview University. Katie Rudy, golf, University of Mary Hardin-Baylor. Emily Perkins, track and field, Hardin-Simmons. Iona Moffitt, dive, Iowa State. Tatum Nelson, cross country and track, Western Colorado University. Um, Ad Admikian, volleyball, Dominican University, Addie. Uh, McKenna Bean, equestrian, Texas A&M, and Lila Sider, equestrian, Texas A&M. Congratulations to Cactus Shadows October Athletes of the Month, Katie Rudy and Jack Zanbergen. And on November 14th, our 8th grade students flew into Cactus Shadows High School for their annual Future Falcon Fly-In. This event gave 8th graders a great opportunity to explore the high school and get a taste of what it's like to be a Falcon. I'd like to send a special shout out to the Cactus Shadows High School counseling team for organizing such a great event. And last, but certainly not least, I'd like to introduce James Arrington, a 5th grader at Black Mountain Elementary School who was our student leader of the month and on the dais with us this evening. James? Hello, my name is James and I am representing Black Mountain Elementary School. I'm very happy to be here today. I came to Black Mountain because of the theater program. I'd recommend Black Mountain Elementary School for everyone. It is a school with great people and amazing teachers. I think Black Mountain will become even better in the future and I'm excited to see what Black Mountain will become. What I'm trying to say is that if you go to Black Mountain, expect to have fun, meet new people, and learn new things. Thank you. And that concludes my superintendent report. Very good. Item 2.1, November Students of the Month. It is with great pleasure and pride that we come together to celebrate some truly exceptional individuals, our Students of the Month. Each month, we are privileged to recognize students who exemplify the core values of our district, perseverance, leadership, compassion, and excellence. Tonight, we are not just honoring academic achievement, but also the qualities that make our students well-rounded individuals and future leaders. The renowned American author and poet, Maya Angelou, who once said, success is liking yourself, liking what you do, and liking how you do it. This perfectly reflects the students we recognize today who have not only achieved success, but done so with passion and dedication. Our students of the month have pushed their limits, inspired their peers, and made their families, teachers, and community proud. Whether excelling in academics, arts, athletics, or leadership, they remind us that great greatness is achievable with hard work and commitment. As we honor our students of the month, let us also remember that their achievements are not solely their own. Behind every successful student stands a network of supportive parents, caring teachers, and a community that believes in their potential. It is this collective effort together that nurtures the growth of these remarkable individuals. To our honorees, congratulations. You represent the very best of the Cave Creek Unified School District, and we are excited to witness the incredible contributions you will make to our world in the years to come. And now I would like to ask my fellow board members to come up to the dais.
right. As we read um, each student's name, please come up so we can shake your hands and congratulate you and then stay up here because we'll take some pictures. Our first student is from Black Mountain, Amalia French. Also from Black Mountain, Ellie Packer Macedo. Congratulations. From Desert Sun Academy, Academy Everett Klarkowski. From Desert Willow, Briley Jenenbacher. From Horseshoe Trails, Kane McClure. From Lone Mountain, Anna Mulligan. And representing Sonoran Trails, Fernando Valle. In October, for our Students of the Month, one of our students was not able to be here, so we're going to recognize her. Um, it's Mara Scherf from Cactus Shadows. And also from Cactus Shadows, Presley Walker. Congratulations to all of our students. We will be taking a five minute recess, so if you would like to leave, this might be your opportunity. All right, please take a seat. All right, moving right along, item 2.2, our Carefree Cares Award presented by Mr. Dolezal, Mayor John Crane, and Vice Mayor, Mayor Cheryl Croyer. So thank you, thank you all for letting us be here today. And before I start, I just want to say, uh, just to piggyback on what uh, Board Member Moore said and the superintendent said about imprints of honor. So Veterans Heritage Project has been a partner with the Town of Carefree on Veterans Day since day one, which I believe is like 15 years now. And, and the impact that has on the students and the veterans is really incredible. So we're thankful for that and we're thankful for that partnership. Um, so Carefree Cares, so uh, we really appreciate the opportunity to come before you today just to show you and express to you how much the town appreciates what the board does 
and what your teachers and staff do. So Carefree Cares, for those who don't know, is a program where um, the principals from each of the seven schools identify an exceptional staff member or a teacher um, and uh, write some commendation for them. And I would suggest, if you haven't, just to review those commendations because they're inspirational um, and, they're, and the teachers that you have are truly outstanding and it's just, uh, just fantastic for us as a town to um, recognize them and to show how much we appreciate what they do and what everyone here does. And, and what we do is we'll, we'll call their names and we have a pin and a gift card for each of them. Thank you, Mayor Crane, Vice Mayor Croyer. Uh, it is our privilege to be able to partner with you in, in several items, this being one of them, um, but all the relationships that we've continued to develop and, and do, do well for the benefit of the town and for the benefit of our kids and our school district. So without any further ado, uh, would you like to step in the front? And I will go ahead and call names. When your name is called, please come up and uh, receive your pin and card from Mayor Crane and Vice Mayor Croyer. And then please stay up front so we can take a picture at the end as well. Uh, so if we'll start with Black Mountain Elementary School, Annika Milhut. From Desert Sun Academy, Ali Batansis. From Horseshoe Trails, Karen Bird. From Lone Mountain Elementary, Natalie May. From Sonoran Trails Middle School, Nancy Lee Richardson. And from Cactus Shadows High School, Jill Jellison. And from Desert Willow Elementary School, Wendy Gazzo. Item 2.3, Arizona letter grade model presented by Dr. Jensen. Thank you, President Busby, members of the board. I'm excited to see that so many people came out tonight for our letter grade presentation. Um, so many of our schools have already seen this. Um, some of them will see it tomorrow. But um, basically, this is a, an overview quickly of um, the school letter grades, how they're calculated, and to make sure that the public is informed um, about where our letter grades are currently and how they come about. Um, why do we have them? Basically because it is um, a federal and state law. Um, this, uh, the state law mandates that the A through F letter grade system is based on a range of quantitative measures including the statewide assessment. I will take this opportunity to let you know that it is public schools who receive the letter grades um, only. 
Uh, what do they mean? It is pretty self-explanatory. That is one thing that the state and the federal government did that was nice and simple. It's an A through F, A, B, C, D, F. Very intuitive. Um, there are different models depending on the grade levels um, represented in a school. As you know, in Arizona, we have a lot of different um, models of, of schools. So we have a K-8 model, a 9 through 12 model that governs um, Cactus Shadows. And then there's a non-typical model, which is what our um, online academy would, would go by, but we do not have enough students in there at this time to, to merit a grade. This is lighter on my screen. Um, just one thing I want to point out in the K-8 model, 50% of the grade comes from growth of students. That benefits school districts and schools where there's low proficiency but high growth because that means you move a student from minimally proficient up to partially proficient. We have a lot more proficients than many other schools and so it, it sometimes can be a challenge and cause um, difficulty for us in terms of um, scoring highly on this um, scale. Again, this is just another way of showing that we've got um, proficiency, growth, EL standing for English learners. Um, they have their own set of points that we get in order to monitor to make sure that they're making appropriate growth in their English language development. Um, and then acceleration slash readiness and um, then there's bonus points, which I like to think of as extra credit. There's our letter grades, the big reveal uh, for this year. So we did great at all of our schools. I'm proud of all of them, including Sonoran Trails Middle School. Um, it is very difficult to get the A at the 7-8 level. Um, we haven't quite unlocked exactly why, but we do think one of the issues is that growth. Um, there's a whole lot of other factors, including eighth graders and how much they care about a, a test like this. But um, there are many factors, but one of them is that growth. Those points are difficult to get when you are just two grade levels um, that, that you're measuring by. Here's just a quick comparison to some of our nearby charters. Um, this, we, we pulled these lists out of groups that we do lose ch students to, um, again. I would have put the private schools as well, but we do not have, we don't get data from them. They don't take the same test. Comparisons to traditional hybrid K-12s where our students have enrolled. So we really do perform very well compared to um, the other options that are out there. In the 9 through 12 model, it's much different. Um, you will see we don't have 50% based off of growth. Part of that is it's much more difficult because most of that grade comes from the junior year ACT test. They do now have the Aspire test, so we do measure growth there. However, it's um, just a, a lot more difficult to measure that growth. Um, but one of the things I will say I like about it is that we get a lot, and if you'll remember back, I think it was September 16th, um, when we discussed our test results, we get a lot of points, I'm gonna call them, for things like our college and career readiness, which comes from our CTE classes, students who are going to EVIT, who are completing those career pathways, students enrolled in du dual enrollment classes. We get a lot of points from those as well. So I appreciate it that it, it looks at the whole student. It's not just their ACT test score. Here is Cactus Shadows. Again, we did very well. Um, Really, we, we got a lot of points this year from our CTE because we had a lot of students who were completing their pathway. That was something we put in um, about two years ago um, with our Director of College and Career Readiness, Erin Scher, where we double blocked the classes so that the students complete them and they don't just get to dabble in a bunch of different things. They, they do something, they do it well, and they get their industry certificate. Um, here we are, our high school. Again, we're in an area where there's excellent schools, um, excellent public schools, and we're among the most excellent of them all. So um, something, again, for us to be proud of. 
Some of the areas, um, I, I feel like I show this every single year, that we will continue to work on are creating those guaranteed systems of support for subgroups. So um, we want to be a, high, a whole district where it's not an option to fail in our district, where we will do whatever it takes to make sure that students receive the intervention. They don't have to come after school. They don't have to come before school, that we find some way to get that intervention in the class during school so that we can help all students succeed. Um, we're going to continue to focus on the CCRI points, um, which really helps us a lot, especially at the high school level. Um, I know it says here, just decrease the third grade students in the minimally proficient category. I mean, we want to decrease all students who are in that minimally proficient category, but in terms of gaming the system, I'll say, of getting points for the letter grade, it's the third grade ELA minimally proficient that really counts against us, as well as eighth grade. And so um, we're wanting to decrease those if we just want to get some easy points and then increase our highly proficient students, specifically for math in eighth grade. And then, um, of course, we're constantly trying to increase the rigor of our classes to make sure that they're aligning to ACT, that if a student is getting an A in a class, it's actually representative of how they're going to do on not just the ACT, but AP tests, IB tests, all of those exams. And we're wanting to decrease, again, always the percentage of our chronically absent students through attendance campaigns. And so we know that the best place for our students to be um, when school is in session is in school um, and not everywhere else. Overall, as a district, uh, we received a grade of an A. So our district average is 3.86. And um, I do not believe we have weighted GPAs. So that's a very good GPA for us. Um, with that, any questions? I just have one for the elementary school, I guess even for the eighth grade. All students are taking the tests, even those with IP and our PALS and PLC programs. Yes, great question, Vice President Walker. Um, all of our students take the test, even those, and if, if you have a, meet certain eligibility criteria, you can take an alternative assessment, but it is pretty severe. Like, and even when you are in one of those s severe and profound um, situations, you, they still take a test um, and develop a whole portfolio and it's more performance based. It is still, um, there's, it is much more rigorous than I would expect to have uh, for some of the students that, that qualify for that test. But yes, all of our students, it doesn't matter if you have an IEP. Okay, thank you. Uh, well, I have a question. Is it, is it even possible or have we identified, what is it that creates the chronic absenteeism? And that may be hard to, I don't know if it's anything we even try to track or get response on. I mean, that's a good question, Member Ulmer, and we could go very philosophically, but ultimately I would say, just in my professional experience, it's a connection to school and an engagement in school, um, which is one of the reasons why, like at the middle school, we really push clubs, joining a club, getting involved in something. Um, that even dictates why we've structured our fees the way we do at the middle school, uh, making it relatively cheap for students to participate in as many clubs as they possibly can. Um, but ultimately, I would say it comes down to the connection in some way, shape, or form that they need to want to be there. There are a few health-related instances, but those are few and far between. And Thank then you. what's the step on the third, you said third grade? Mm -hmm. Right, so what's that, what, what's the barrier of entry of like course correcting on that? You said, well, we have a night, but what is that thing that we're going to do to mitigate the gap? to decrease our number of minimally proficient students yeah. there, increase the rigor in K through two. Um, so we wanna make sure that, well, which that we've already done, um, we have put into place, and I think I've shared with you guys in the last, in September 16th, that all of our um, students K through six now have a data tracking sheet that go with them. So it's not just, um, I get an A because I'm a good student and sit in my class and smile and I'm compliant every day and bring in, you know, whatever the teacher asks me to do, but they get a, 
You're reading currently at 56 words per minute and you're supposed to be working, reading at 86 words per minute. So therefore, at home and at school, we're gonna continue to work on your reading fluency or your reading according to three, these three different assessments at this level. So this is what we're going to do at school. So really individualizing that data and making sure that K through two is meeting the same standards that we're expecting for, th for third grade. Because that third grade test is a K through three test. I mean, they, so, don't, they can't just catch up in one grade level. And you're saying that's at like the, the student level, that point. Yes. Now are you gamifying that or is that just a matter of like, hey, this is what you need to do? Do you mean gamifying it for so it's fun for the kids or game? Um, I'm assuming in order to move a gap, there has to be a motive, right? I mean, as an adult, a bonus, a compensation would move me to do the action. So I'm just curious, like, how are you getting that? Yeah. No, they don't get prizes for uh, getting on level. I mean, in, in some ways they do. I know some of our schools uh, use Accelerated Reader and they get a trinket every time they meet, you know, 5,000 words or whatever it might be. But um, no, district-wide, we're not gamifying it. We are, however, relying on the research that shows that if um, students are in, engaged in their own self-assessment and know where they are and where the target is, that then they're gonna be more motivated to get there. So we are showing students where they are in relationship to their target and so that they, they take ownership in their growth and in their learning. Okay, so that's a little bit of gamification. It's competitive. I got you. If you're a competitive person. <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> Any other questions? No. Thank you, Dr. Jensen. Um, item three, action consent. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Item 3.5, monthly enrollment report. Uh, is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All right. You pulled this. I did. Thanks. Uh -huh. um, all right. So on this um, monthly enrollment, obviously we've seen some decrease, but plus that. What was the last one? 36 plus 18? Is that right? Um, Superintendent Dolezal, just question I have is how are the um, exit interviews going? Are we at a point where we're getting any information where we can identify trends or understandings of plus minus and I mean, I understand we had 36 no. and 18 went back in, so we gained a little. It's not devastating, but still loss is loss. Yeah, thanks for the question, Member Moore. And I, I will turn it over to um, Patty and her team because they're the ones that conduct those interviews. Uh, absolutely. Thank you for the question, Member Moore. So the um, after a person, a family leaves, um, one person collects that information and, and sometimes we know that they moved to Texas or whatever. We don't call them up. Um, but then once a month, they pass over their data to um, Megan Lynch, who's the administrative assistant in the Ed Services Department. And Megan calls the family and she has a little script that she reads and goes through and really just wants to know what can we do better and um, phrases it that way. Um, she then categorizes it into a couple different themes. So either programming at the new school. So did they go to, um, again, all of these people would be going somewhere closer. So did they go to um, Pinnacle High School because of programming that we can't offer? Um, staff issues, did they have an issue with a, a human? Um, convenience, online, sometimes that um, tends to be what it is if they can do their high school education or whatever it is from home. Um, or student to student issues, and then health and mental health issues. So this was too much for my student to go to school every day. Uh, they need a break. And so I'm going to um, take them and usually those students go online because that's where they can find the flexibility that they're looking for. So those are the categories. Um, in terms of trends, first of all, we get I'd say we have about a 40% response rate of people who answer the phone and then or return the phone call. Um, so not a huge rate. Um, a, a lot of times it is a student to student issue where they'll say, you know, we're done with the conflict between the student and the other one and we can't take it anymore. Um, where does but, that fall? 
Mm -hmm. Where does that bucket fall for that? Is that under mental health? No, that we, we call that student to student. Okay, we, so it's we've its made bucket. its own thing. Like okay. there's peer conflict. Okay. And then um, the mental health is a different one. And that's usually the parents report it as anxiety. They'll say there's anxiety issues and they just can't take going to school every day. There's too much, you know, there's a lot going on. Um, so in, in terms of a major trend, I wouldn't say there's a major trend. Probably student to student is the most common, but um, I don't know that we have enough data to say that that's uh, something really big we need to deal with. Now, if they name kids or whatever comes out of it, we absolutely relay that onto the principal and make sure that the principal is following, following up and um, identifying any other issues that may need to be addressed as well. And sometimes it's even resulted, I think one or two cases where then the principal even followed up with the family and said, I heard this was the issue. Why didn't you come to me? I want to help or whatever that may be. Do you see that as a common theme? The student to student conflict? No, last sentence. That We're they don't getting... notify the principal before they leave? Yeah. Oh, I don't think I have the data to say if that's common or not. I'd be happy to get that information and get back to you. Okay, I'll take it. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? I'm good. Okay. Do I do. Um, I'm wondering about the possibility of adding an email follow-up when they don't respond by phone, only because we live in a time where a lot of people don't like to get on the phone anymore and they don't like the almost confrontational feel that it has. Whereas maybe if we would follow up with an email and they felt more empowered to respond this way, Absolutely. it might provide more detail for us. Yes, that's, that's something we can definitely look into. And um, do you have a survey? I think we can do that. We well, yes, because she records all of her answers into a Google form. No, no, I'm saying like actual survey you could send to the family versus right. So right now she records them into the survey. We have the survey created. We're right. just orally going through it with the parents. And so we would just send them the survey instead. Yeah, that, that Does would that probably, make sense? That'd be the catch if they go absent. It, it does seem in the data we receive, we get, we do receive a lot of information of where they're going. I don't think as much of reasons why, but we do know where a lot of them are going. Um, and I am in the four years I've been here, you know, since pandemic, I have seen a huge shift going to the online school. And then ever since that voucher program, I would say there's a lot more competition with the private schools. It seems like that are, especially even in that K through eight with what's nearby, that's able to capture that. Um, well, yeah, that's the million dollar question we're trying to get to. We've got, we've got a good product. We got the scores. The question just starts to become is how do we retain and what's that element we're missing? And I don't know, you know, it's, this is going to be a, a game of trying to figure it out. Um, so that's why I pulled this one. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Item 4.1 call to the public. Call to the public according to ARS 38-431.01H, governing board members may not discuss or take legal action on matters raised during an open call to the public. The only allowable responses a governing board member may make are, one, a board member may respond if there is a direct criticism of the board member, two, a board member may direct staff to look into a matter, or three, a board member can take action to have this item placed on a future agenda. Speakers need to be mindful of what they say when presenting to the board. Inappropriate comments could be considered slanderous. Um, because we have so many public comments, um, you will, public comments will be kept to one minute unless uh, you have uh, combined your time with other speakers. Our first speaker will have one minute, and it is John Love. Good evening, uh, President Busby, Superintendent Dolezal, and members of the board. Um, I came this evening to speak about the calendar proposal for the upcoming school year. As a longstanding member of this community, I've had the pleasure of attending numerous school events with my wife who works in the district and my daughters, one of which is a junior at Cactus Shadows High School. 
Unfortunately, I've spent the last seven years teaching in a specialized program for special education students in one of our neighboring districts, primarily due to the significant um, difference in pay. However, I found the calendar proposal for a four day work week intriguing as a way to compensate for that difference. Although I've only explored leadership opportunities that align with my current field of study within this school district, I would be more inclined to consider a lateral move to my home district with the approval of this calendar. That being said, I ask you to consider the four day work week calendar as it could attract more highly qualified teachers to this district. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Our next speaker is Nicole Robinson, and she will have two minutes as she has combined her time with Alyssa Erickson. Mm -hmm. I was planning on it. Okay, we have Alyssa Erickson then. Hi. Before we put the timer up, I also combined my time with Kelly Loves, which should okay. allow me three minutes. Three, yes, you do have three minutes. Okay, thank you. That's my error. Uh, President Busby and members of the board, my name is Alyssa Erickson and I'm in my 19th year teaching at Cactus Shadows High School. I feel like I have an interesting perspective in regards to the district's direction. I recently realized that I've actually spent more than half my life at Cactus Shadows. Uh, between being a teacher for 19 years and a four-year student and a graduate of Cactus Shadows my High School myself. I'm also a parent to a third grader at Black Mountain Elementary School and an eighth grader at Sonoran Trails Middle School. I am a Creeker who has never left. I have stayed to teach and to raise my family in this district. I feel like I understand some of the inner workings due to being a teacher and the parent perspective when dealing with my own children within our school district. Working for CCUSD has definitely been a rewarding experience, but like many of the teachers that will speak tonight, the financial strain due to low salary, and honestly, how um, low salaries, and honestly, how this low pay will actually affect my Arizona State retirement is concerning. I am aware that because I have been employed by CCUSD for over 10 years, I have actually lost over a full year worth of pay compared to people with similar education and employment in our surrounding district. This financial disparity is very concerning. However, my main concern is the lack of quality teachers our district has been able to attract and retain. Our teacher turnover rate within CCUSD has been approximately 30% new hires each year over the past three years. Many new hires don't come with the experience or qualifications that many of our veteran teachers who have departed due to financial needs had. This has led to lower quality experiences for many of our students. I believe that our children deserve better. I think a four day school week with a highly qualified teacher is more beneficial than a five day school week with a hardly qualified instructor. As a teacher, I understand the appeal of the four day week and I think this change would make our district very attractive to the best educators in the Valley. I am asking that until the financial situation improves, that you consider a four day school week to appeal to quality teachers. Our children deserve the best education we can provide under the current financial strain. Thank you. All right, our next one is Shannon Takawi. And I apologize if I, all right. And you have two minutes. President Busby and members of the board. First, I would like to thank Mr. Dolezal and the board members who responded to my email with my long story. Uh, I appreciate your time and acknowledgement. Cave Creek is a community and before I moved here, I did not realize how small of a community it was. But as my husband frequently jokes, I cannot, we cannot go anywhere without running into either my students or their classmates. And I love that. And that community can be a huge support I have seen the community come together to support sick classmates, hurt pets, teachers' families, 
and especially the tremendous support I had with my own illness last year. This community also has a large burden. We have a significant portion of the population that is not involved in our schools, so they do not vote to fund our schools. This burden has continually been pushed on to our teachers. We make an average of $200 less per year compared to 2008. That's figures on the paycheck. That is not, that doesn't take into account consideration, or to, does not take into account inflation. Teachers in Cave Creek earn 16,000 less than the average Maricopa County teacher. Community support cannot make up for not being able to support our own families. We have extra duties because there isn't enough support staff to be lunch aides or hall monitors. We have large classes to limit the number of staff needed. There is a huge difference in my class of 20 versus my class of 32, both in the student achievement, the classroom environment, and the time it takes me to grade their work. I support the four-day school week as both a parent of two girls with many evening rehearsals and a teacher in the district. We have repeatedly been told that more money is not possible, so let's try to lighten the load that our teachers have to carry. We understand it's an inconvenience, but our teachers and school staff have been asked to shoulder this burden alone for too long. Uh, every year, more of our teachers leave, and I cannot fault them. I am reminded of a quote, a good teacher burns itself up to light the way for others. And like a candle, when all the teachers have burned out, everyone is going to be left in the dark. Thank you. Next is Allison Yaden, and she will have two minutes. Good evening, President Busby, Superintendent Dolezal, and members of the Governing Board. My name is Allison Yaden, and I'm a Nationally Board Certified Teacher with a Master's Degree and 15 years experience. I have dedicated my career to this district because I believe in the work we do and the community we serve. However, as it stands, I'm struggling to continue this work. Despite my credentials and commitment, I am facing the harsh reality that I may need to sell my home because I simply cannot make ends meet on my current salary. I will be driving an hour each way to um, and from work because I cannot afford to live in or near the district I love and serve. Our teachers are among the lowest paid in Maricopa County and the cost of living continues to rise. This discrepancy has forced many of us into untenable situations. While I am committed to my students and this district, commitment alone does not pay the bills. We need real tangible change to retain the talented and experienced educators our students deserve. One way to demonstrate that the district values its teachers is by adopting a four-day school week. Uh, this would not only ease the financial burden on educators by reducing commuting costs, but also provide much needed time for rest, planning, and professional development time that could be reinvested in our students and their learning. I urge you to approve the four-day school week as a concrete step towards supporting your teachers. Words of appreciation are nice, but without action to back them up, they ring hollow. The reality is if we don't do something soon to show that we value our teachers, we will continue to lose them to districts that are willing to make real change. I want to stay in this district. I love my school, my colleagues, and most of all my students. But without meaningful support from the community and this board, staying may no longer be possible. Please take this step to show that you value the work we do every day. Thank you for your time and consideration. Next is Ashley Faust, and she will have one minute. Good evening. My name is Ashley Faust, and I've been a teacher at Sonoran Trails Middle School for the entirety of my career for the past 12 years. As teachers, as you know, we have the ability to work anywhere, and I continue to choose to work in this district because I love it, and I always have since I was a student teacher. I love my students, I love their families, the community, my leaders, my colleagues, my board members. Um, unfortunately, I'm coming to a point in my life where the choice to continue to work here is impacting me financially. I can no longer afford to live paycheck to paycheck, and sadly, as we all know, that is the reality of working in this district. I currently work several other jobs during the school year, as well as during the summer, and still struggle to make ends meet. Having a four-day work week would give me an extra day each week to work another job to help supplement the income I desperately need to live comfortably and hopefully afford to be a homeowner one day. This would allow me to continue to choose the district that I work for for my entire career 
and um, be loyal and continue to love it dearly. So thank you so much for your consideration. Next is Eric DeVore. He will have two minutes. He has combined with Wendy Gazzo. Good evening, President Busby, Governing Board Members, Superintendent Zolzo. Good evening. My name is Eric DeVore. I'm 13th year teacher at Sonoran Trails Middle School. And for this district, that's becoming a veteran teacher. In my 13 years, eight of those years, I have had an extra class just so I can make ends meet financially. With the way things have been going with inflation, I can't make those ends meet anymore. I have no finances right now <clears throat> for any kind of emergency. I'm 40 years old and I have never taken a personal vacation in my adult life. And I live in central Phoenix. I could drive five minutes and make $20,000 more. To quote member Moore 10 minutes ago, compensation motivates adults. So I want to know, how are we going to attract quality teachers? Because in my 13 years here, we have never passed an override. So what is going to drive, who is going to want to drive from the Phoenix Metro all the way up to Black Mountain or Cactus Shadows to make one of the worst pays in Maricopa County and in Arizona in general? If I want to consider staying in this district to survive financially, I need the three-day weekend to work a second job. I've stayed to support our community, but in those 13 years, the community has not supported teachers because they have not passed an override. Please consider the four-day work week to attract and retain quality teachers. As the tw 2019 Teacher of the Year, I would love to see future Teachers of the Year come and stay in CCUSD. Thank you. Kathy Anderson, she will have two minutes. She has combined her time with Chris Hazeltine. Hello, my name... Sorry, I'm tall. Hello, my name is Kathy Anderson, and I've been a proud community member here in Cave Creek for almost 20 years, and my husband has lived here almost 30. We have two children that have been in this district and have attended Lone Mountain, Sonoran Trails, and Cactus Shadows. I'm also in my 25th year of teaching in public education. My family and I are in full support of the full day school week that is being proposed, the main reason being to retain and attract highly qualified educators. <clears throat> By retaining... <clears throat> Highly qualified teachers and, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm so sorry, and attracting new ones, this will greatly benefit our students, schools, and communities through high, through high student retention, attracting new students and families, and also increasing test scores, which seems to be the main focus in education these days. I'm also in support of this as a parent because I watch my children work very hard within their academic rigor, being presented to them by amazing educators, and they are exhausted. To have an additional day for them to study, work, work on projects, prepare for the next week, volunteer in this amazing community, and actually get some rest would be awesome. I support this as an educator who loves this community and district but cannot afford to work here due to the salaries being one of the lowest in the state. Finally, I also support this new calendar as a community member who loves to hear how much Cave Creeks loves their teachers, but I'm at the point that we as a community need to step up and take action to actually show them that we do. The four-day work week would actually allow so many of these educators who already have an extra job a day or two to work, also plan and grade papers, not to mention give them time with their families and self-care. I am in awe of some of these teachers that stand behind me and that are in the classrooms with my children every single day in this district. Some of them are the best I've ever seen. Please pass this, not only to take a step to allow them to see how much we love and care for their well-being, not just as educators, but as human beings. Thank you very much. Jamie Friedman will have three minutes. Uh, time is being uh, combined with Kirsten Wood and Christine Hughley. Hi. Good evening, President um, Busby, uh, Mr. Dolezal, and the board. Um, my name is Jamie Friedman. I have four students in Cave Creek District. First of all, I'm going to try not to cry because the best science teachers, Spanish teachers, and the teachers that they have had 
are the ones saying that they might leave. So, I, But I'm speaking today as a teacher. So I do have four children here, but I'm a teacher. And as teachers, it's our goal to enrich your students' experience and their journey and to help them and all these things. But we know that today, Mr. Dole is always going to recommend not to do this 40 week. And the reason that we know this is because the argument's going to be made that it's too risky. We're going to lose enrollment. Enrollment, enrollment, right? We're going to worry about that. But we know we're not going to recommend this because we haven't seen anything that would show that we were looking into the details. Are we meeting with the teachers? Are we talking to people? Are we saying, hey, how many minutes do we need in a school year? How is this going to work? How does this compare to the Wednesday that, quite frankly, is the worst for a working parent, as my other spouse has to do, because she has meetings every Wednesday. So a Friday actually works out. We're talking about chronic absenteeism. Let's talk about how half my students never even come on a Friday as seniors. And if they do, they have some type of rally or football game or something. And so when we're looking at chronic absenteeism, we're looking at all these things, have we even talked about these solutions? And I think, you know, CCD right now requires significant reform, but it's got to be built on creative and collaborative solutions. We have to think through this. If we continue with the status quo and we worry about enrollment and we don't have a vision, then we're never going to get there. We just aren't. And what we know is we know good teachers create academic experiences for students. And if we lose this giant group that showed up, our kids don't have an academic experience. And quite frankly, I'm not going to Candeo or the private school. I want a public school experience for my children too. And that's what's missing. And maybe this four day work week, it's not a magical trick, but there's also no magical revenue stream coming. Esser is gonna go away. Where's the money? We're gonna close schools, we're gonna do all this, but nobody's dropping this money on us. So we have to be creative. We have to think of collaborative solutions. We have to think of how we can help our teachers, bring them in, retain them, get the tenured people here. And until we do that, until we have a viable, great plan, we are not going to be successful. And that's what we're all here. We're here to make sure that the academics of our students are successful. And that's why I'm here. And whether it's for my students that I teach or my own, all of them matter in this. So what we're asking today is for a viable plan. We're asking for CCU CCUSD to thrive and to truly do that we need to rely on innovation. We need dedicated teachers. We need a clear vision for how we're going to move forward and right now the only negotiating power, the only thing we've got to give these people out here is a four-day work week. So so be it if that's what keeps them in the classroom, if that's what keeps my science teacher from leaving all these amazing people, then so be it we need to do it and that is what I'm here to ask for. Something that is a viable creative plan that makes a change. Thank you. Next, Jill McLynn. She will have one minute. Good evening, President Busby and members of the Governing Board. My name is Jill McLynn. This is my 18th year teaching in the district. There is so much potential in this district, but right now the biggest issue is attracting quality teachers. The number one reason why anyone is here is because of our great students. In order for our students to succeed, they need quality, highly effective teachers that have the students' best interests at heart. Quality teachers are those people that know students year after year. Students are excited to have those awesome teachers whose names they recognize or who have their siblings. When we have high teacher turnover because we can no longer afford to pay them, we lose these quality teachers. The four-day school week has gained attention across America, particularly in smaller school districts. When a student has an ineffective teacher for one school year, it can take up to three school years of highly effective teachers to get that student back on grade level. The best thing CCUSD can do for their students is to make sure that they have highly effective teachers. This is why I would encourage you to consider moving CCUSD to a four-day work week, because with highly effective teachers, we can continue to have a positive impact on student lives. Next is Shelly Niffen. She will have two minutes. She combined with Trish Doran. Good evening, President Busby and members of the board. I've been a teacher at Sonoran Trails Middle School for the last 12 years, and my own children attend Cactus Shadows and Horseshoe Trails. I'm speaking tonight to urge you to consider adopting a four-day school week as a proactive measure to combat the effects of low salaries, high turnover, and limited funding in our district. This would provide teachers the much needed time to rest, reduce burnout, and help us attract experienced educators. Many of us commute 30 to 60 minutes daily because we can't afford to live here. This combined with the high demands, low pay, 
Angelo Pay drives talented teachers to other districts. A four-day week could change that. I understand concerns about enrollment loss or child care challenges, but the alternative, doing nothing, maintaining the status quo, is already driving families and teachers away. A shorter school week could also appeal to parents and students by addressing the rise in student stress and anxiety while preserving academic standards. This is a golden opportunity for you to once and for all show teachers in this district that you value them. And in that way, do what is best for students. I hope you'll take it. Thank you. Andrew Cupo. He will have three minutes. He's combined his time with Susan Goldborg and Rachel Goldberg. I got both Goldbergs. Goldbergs. <laughs> uh, President Busby, members of the board, most of you know me, but for the record, my name is Andrew Cupo, and I've been a teacher for the past 15 years here at Cactus Shadows. I'm here tonight again as the co-president of the Cave Creek Education Association, the professional association of teachers here in Cave Creek, to encourage you to please consider the four-day work week for the 24-25 school year. You've probably noticed the increase in teacher attendance tonight. That's no coincidence. We're all here to show our solidarity in asking this district to finally prove that we are valued. Many more would have attended, but unfortunately, they're currently working their second or third job. A sad reality for 66% of teachers here in Cave Creek. I understand that the idea of a four-day work week is scary and that the details are not fully clear at this time. I know there are serious questions in the community about the impact on student learning or how this will affect our enrollment. But the fact remains that the single greatest factor in a student's learning is a quality teacher. A quality teacher in the classroom. For the past three years, CCUSD is at a 30% teacher attrition rate. This is nearly double that of our neighboring districts. Uh, this data is an irrefutable and clear indication that teacher turnover is a serious problem here in CCUSD. We presented last year to this very board the results of the interest-based negotiations. Our recommendation was a four-day work week. You surveyed parents and teachers, and the greatest support among nearly all demographics was a four-day work week. You saw a presentation at the last board meeting from a calendar focus group whose recommendation was the four-day work week. You see a room full of professional educators with years of educational experience and expertise who are supporting and recommending a four-day work week. Please do what great leaders have always done. Listen and embrace this opportunity to set Cave Creek apart. I counted how many people gave up their time and counted. It was approximately 22, right? That number of people is less than how many teachers left Cave Creek last year. So look behind me and imagine an empty room because that's what could happen if we don't do something to show teachers that they are valued. I respectfully urge you to direct this cabinet to provide a clear and comprehensive proposal for a four day work week, one that addresses community concerns and earns your confidence that you can vote in favor of it. Thank you. Item 1.5, uh, revision to the annual financial report for 2023-24, presented by Dr. Pletnick. President Busby, governing board members, uh, we ask that you um, approve the revision to the fiscal year 24 uh, AFR as presented. So, <clears throat> so moved. Is there a second? Second. Any questions? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Item 6.1, approval of school year calendar presented by Mr. Dolezal. President Busby, members of the board, and to the audience, I'd like to walk you through some of my thinking and considerations prior to making my recommendation. Number one, I had to consider the work that the focus group did in their recommendation made at the work study meeting on October 22nd to consider a four day week. I have tremendous amount of respect for the individuals who comprise the group and know they presented what they believed was the good idea for us to consider within their recommendation. 
I also appreciate them recognizing that other things may be in play that may lead to positioning the district to be able to better support our teaching staff. As you know, my litmus test for decision making has three pillars. And some of the very people in this room have reminded me of those pillars on a regular basis. Number one, how is it good for all students? Number two, how is it promoting the current and future financial stability of the district? And number three, listening to the community we are blessed to serve. Regarding students, I agree having a great teacher is best for students. I don't think that's up for debate. While research may be inconclusive regarding the impact on academic achievement for many of our students with the maintenance of instructional time, some of our students may struggle and are part of various vulnerable populations where research does indicate a negative impact risk. Currently, our percentage of students under the exceptional student umbrella is 18%. Our free and reduced level is 13%, and our ELL population is 8%. I am weighing the potential impact of my recommendation on all our students. Regarding financial stability, enrollment is the lifeblood of every public district. I saw the large number of positive sentiments expressed for a four-day calendar in the survey. I also saw the most negative sentiments expressed for a four-day calendar in the survey. The fact is that parents have a choice, and we must anticipate a percentage of those families who expressed a negative sentiment leaving the district to go down the road for a five-day experience. I have heard people assert that a four-day calendar is a zero-cost option. Respectfully, losing enrollment is a cost, and a big one. Fewer students equals fewer teachers. Loss of enrollment means we cannot retain our teachers. I also have considered to consider the potential additional cost and impact related to our classified staff. Taking a risk that does not lead to stabilizing our financial position currently and into the future is a gamble. We want to attract and retain exceptional teachers and staff. However, we cannot do that without the funding in place from student enrollment. Regarding listening to our community, the original survey conducted by the focus group demonstrated a larger positive reaction to the five-day calendar overall as well, as well as a larger negative reaction to the four-day calendar. I appreciate the parents as well as the teachers, some who fill both roles, many people that are in this room and many that are not, who took their time and energy to either write emails sharing their thoughts with me the board, or who stopped to talk with me and share their ideas over the last month. The calendar focus group mentioned on October 22nd that they were not privy to what other groups that may be working on different methods to assist with in increasing compensation. I believe that to tackle this long-standing dilemma that I've been around for 23 of my 25 years in Arizona, witnessing firsthand as a teacher and as a administrator, I believe it will take a multifaceted approach by this administration and by this board. More importantly, I believe that that's actually possible. We can and we will right this ship. There is, in fact, ongoing work to examine our current and financial situation, first from a cost savings lens and then later creating revenue streams that are not reliant on passing a bond and override, which may provide us the financial stability necessary to allow for increases to all employees without putting the district at high risk to lose enrollment. Again, I've listened to our teachers and staff on both sides. For the 23 years I've been in Cave Creek, one of the things I absolutely love and appreciate are the people that I have been and still are blessed to work with. It is with them in mind that I do believe there are measures we are able to take to put us in a better place moving forward together. And there are opportunities to explore within a calendar. To that end, I plan on putting together a new dedicated calendar committee charged with looking at alternative possibilities and opportunities that do demonstrate the love and respect our teachers deserve and continues to honor the work all our employees do for our students. That committee would look at how to implement ideas within the law, the structure, and the start and end dates established over the next three-year calendar cycle, and bring that level of detail to the board prior to upcoming years. I've been honest and open with my whys, leading to my recommendation. 
and it is the one who is extremely proud and terribly honored to serve this community as superintendent. I am taking a calculated risk with whatever calendar I recommend and know there will be disappointment. Ultimately, therefore, I must make a recommendation to you this evening that is informed by and aligned with both data and my moral compass. With that as the background to my why behind the recommendation in addition to giving, in addition to the importance of giving our families a structure and known start and end dates for the next three years, administration moves, the governing board adopts the one week fall break, two week winter break, and one week spring break model with a five day school week for the 25-26, 26-27, and 27-28 school years. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. I would. I would. Oh, questions, comments. You trying to vote on this? I would no. like to, to. Oh. Well, I'm asking if there's anybody has any comments. Oh, I got a lot. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, I would actually like to move that we table this vote based on public comments and based on additional information that's coming out at the next meeting that is gonna help solve some of these issues. Um, so I'd like to table the vote until further information from the other committee that's permit that's presenting next board meeting. Okay. Um, I'm going to lead with a statement. This process is flawed in every aspect and it, it's challenging to make any form of a decision when we sit here. And again, I think is a, this is challenging because What's sad about all this is we're missing a we in this equation. And teachers, I hear you. You're hurt. And I understand action is what you're looking for. We will find the action, hopefully tonight. The reality to the problem here is we play this zero-sum game. It's all or nothing on both sides, parents, teachers, community. I've seen it all. It's very frustrating. We're going to present any type of options. What we got presented was an option. We looked at the data. The data should have come with options. We'd like a four day. Great. The data doesn't quite support it, but you want time because you want money. We have to come up with different options and opportunities. So I think that this came in hot and heavy and I'm not sure where the breakdown in the process was. And certainly with more focus groups coming, we need to do a better job at how we set the table so that we can make informed decisions, but we can also understand what it is we're trying to accomplish. So with that, I do think that we have to reevaluate the five day in the aspect of, can we at least compromise? And that's one thing we have yet to figure out as a district is compromise. I agree, majority vote to the five day. But that Wednesday, as I like to call it, wonky Wednesday, why couldn't we look at a Friday option? We need to explore some options. And if that means we've got to sit in this room for the rest of the night to land on a plane, let's land the plane. But the roundabouts that we're going about just don't seem to make sense to me. Anybody else? Comments? No. Yeah. I'm definitely not in favor of tabling this because it's an issue that we need to address because we've got lots of other issues coming up. So I'm definitely not for that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I got a, I got a few comments here. Um, they're not as good as the ones that I listen to, but I'll do my best. Um, first of all, as Superintendent Dole has all stated, I want to thank everyone that took the time to write about this issue. Uh, these are, the, these are the short, these are the long ones, the ones that I guess couldn't read on my computer. I had to print them out. Uh, some of you are here tonight, so thank you for that. Um, they're for and they're against. Some of the families have been for and against. I've gone and I've been talking to people at their doors. They're for and against. And I've read the research. For and against. And the statistics. We've been overwhelmed by statistics the last month. Did you know that a four-day work week reduces bullying by 31%? Unless it increases it by 20%. <laughs> it depends on what you're doing and what you're reading. 
and how that is. But we didn't get put all sorts of different options. We were approached with this one and the five day. Um, a lot of the metrics are very much the same. Even the one that um, Superintendent Dolezal talked about with the uh, special needs kids. As a special ed teacher, that definitely hits home with me. And I want to definitely thank uh, Dr. Jensen for the, what was it, like half an hour that we talked about all these on the phone and answered a lot of my questions. So even with that, there are positives and negatives. Kids with uh, special needs may suffer on this. Some of them, some studies said a lot, some said a little. But they can get supplemental help on Fridays. That's a good thing. But the teachers need to teach then, so that's not much of a four-day work week then. But they'll get paid for that four days, so that's an extra income that they could be getting. So even that has all these positives and negatives. Um, are we... Is this, is this the, you know, are there a lot of questions about a four-day work week? There sure are. Is it going to benefit everyone? I'm sure it's not. And the big issue here that we've heard over and over again is enrollment. People are worried about enrollment. Well, I have not missed a board meeting for the last four years here. And then there was about a year that I was out there listening, and guess what? It was about 5,300 kids back five years ago. There's 3,600 now. It's going down. So one way or another, we have to address that. So like I said, all these statistics are going back and forth. There's one statistic that really just stands out. CCUSD is in the bottom 15% of teacher pay in the state of Arizona. That's irrefutable. That's a fact. And there's no cavalry coming. The legislature that we elected this year is not going to help public education funding at all. Bonds and overrides, who said it? I don't know when the last time was. It was 2007, I think, that we had an override done. But that doesn't mean we stop trying. We have to keep working on that because we have to figure out something. So what do we do in the meantime? Something. FDR said, do something. If it works, keep doing it. If it doesn't work, do something else. The teachers have been telling us loud and clear what they want. I've talked to students. I got to talk to a young gentleman uh, at the candidate forum. His name was Oliver. Uh, he said this interesting thing to me. He said, I've got this great science teacher this year. And then he said, I sure hope he stays the whole year. You know, why does he even have to think that? Um, so to do nothing different at this point, in my opinion, is not an option. So um, if you can't give them more money, you listen to them. These are respected professionals that we're talking about here, and they're kind of telling us what we need to do. So I'm going to just leave it at that for now. And uh, go ahead. Are we going to get to doing? Pardon me? Are we going to get to doing? Um, well, anybody else have any comments? Yes, I do. Um, well, first of all, I wanted to take the opportunity to thank everybody who wrote, called, came to two meetings and spoke, certainly the team that, that worked on all of this, um, because I know it's a emotional, painstaking process, and kind of like Superintendent Dolezal said, you know, you're going to make some people happy and you're going to make some people unhappy, and that's just the way that it always is. I know as a board member, well, first let me start as a, as a parent and, a, and as an individual. I, my family comes from the airline industry. For me, if I were looking at it as a parent, I would be the first one to jump up and say, four days, absolutely, sign me up, sign my kids up. We can do a lot with that. I read a book uh, about a year ago, it's called Troubled by Rob Henderson. If anybody gets the chance to read it, I highly recommend it. He's a product of the foster care system and he's the one that came up with the term luxury beliefs. And it's easy to sit in a situation and look at where you sit and make decisions solely based around that. And like I say, for me, if I were voting as a parent for myself, I would absolutely 100% want a four day work week. But when I really look at the situation, I can say, well, I 
am grateful. I don't have, I didn't have a child with a specialized learning program. I didn't have to worry about after school care or what I was going to do to get that child, my children taken care of on an extra day if I were working. There, there were just a million things that I didn't have to deal with. And for me, I look at that and think that's a luxury belief because I have to be willing to put myself into the situation of other families that don't have that same situation. And that's a lot of what we heard from parents um, against it saying, what about this, what about that? And I also feel like we kind of were presented with a concept with a lot of moving pieces. We don't know how much it's gonna cost for you know Friday care and this and that. We don't know what the start and stop times were. And the last thing I wanna do, or I think the rest of us, is to feel like we're going to Vegas and putting everything on one square and rolling the dice and hoping that we win. We, we're, we're in a tough situation in the district. I don't have to reiterate the fact that, you know, we have a lot of money up in this area, but unfortunately we don't have a lot of money for the schools. I know I speak for everyone that it literally, the weight of knowing that we do not have the funds to pay you what you're worth. We can tell you we appreciate you all day long, and we do, but just like Jeff said, I mean, we, you know, the Calvary's not coming. We're not, we're not, we, we can't just pull money out of nowhere or thin air. Otherwise we would. Um, so I don't know what we do here this evening. I'm willing to do whatever, but I think in order to move a four day calendar forward, we need more information, more input from families. And e even then we're not going to know. Uh, will kid, you know, parents can say, I'll pull my kids out of the district. Will they really? Maybe, maybe not. Some of, some of them will say, I'll stay, but will they or will they not? Same with teachers. Um, because when you look at it, it's like, it's not quite that you get four, you know, four, uh, an extra day off every single week. So there were just so many moving parts and so many people who weighed in, parents, teachers, all of that, um, that it makes it very, very difficult. So um, those are my thoughts. Uh President Busby, my reason for tabling it is because all we can do at this point right now, according to our agenda, is either approve what's presented or not, correct? Um, we, that's what's on, that's what the motion is. Now we can modify the motion. Also. President Busby, Vice President Walker, that is correct. So the motion on the, on the table is such, you can choose to amend the motion. You could table it as an option as well. And again, to bring back something else, uh, but all of those are available to you. Um, I also want to thank everybody that has chimed in on this. It's, it's a very emotional issue. Um, and honestly, you know, there is no right answer to this because it will further create a divide within this district. This board came together in a way that I've not ever experienced with the Cave Creek School Board. And all five of us committed to setting aside personal differences, political differences, whatever, and finding a solution that would help this district. In essence, we said we would collaborate to find something that would work. And that's what I'm hoping we can do here tonight. Um, from all of the comments that everybody so, all of the heartfelt comments, the things that I heard were, as we all know, it's low pay. However, I'm not, I've, I've looked into this and with the, the pay, I don't really think our pay is so astronomically lower than other districts. And I think Mr. Dole, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. You've got some information on that, don't you? With the teacher's pay in our surrounding districts? So yeah, I mean, from the Auditor General's published spending analysis, which comes from every school district's AFR and all of that. So, um, and again, what's there now is fiscal year 23, because 24 hasn't been uploaded into that. Um, so Arizona average, the Arizona average teacher salary is 62,000. 934, uh, Cave Creek uh, average teacher pay is at 58,585. 
Um, again, Auditor General publishes the average teacher salary. Uh, Paradise Valley is 60,752. Uh, Deer Valley is 62,751. And Scottsdale is 64,095. So, yeah, I mean, by no means does this make it okay that we are 2,000, 4,000, 6,000 um, less than all of those, 4,000 less than the Arizona average. Um, and again, so we have to, as a administration and as a board, look for ways to increase all staff compensation. Um, yeah. Can, can I chime? No. Can I chime? Yeah. Go ahead. So we can go around the horn and we can do all this fun stuff. At what point do we just go to work? If you want to table it or we want to amend it and motion it. But the way I see it is this. We have to find some ground. I hear the teachers. There's a compromise. And this is what agitates me. This is why I ran. Compromise. In life, if we walk out of this room and everybody lost, we won. And right now it's a zero-sum game. One side against another side. This isn't going to get us to the finish line. I hear you. I hear you, teachers. I hear the parents, too. And I'm hoping going forward that we can change one aspect of how we communicate. Leaving, quitting, needs to exit our vocabulary. If we're all in this boat together, then we need to be in this boat together. So I think we've got to find a remedy. And I would wager to guess, and especially working in business, there's always operational inefficiencies in every business. And I guarantee you, we kick some stones over. We're going to find some operational inefficiencies to where we can give teachers the breathing room that they're looking for. And a compromise would be something. It may not be the four-day teachers. I mean, candidly, I would like the extra vacation day personally with my kids. But it isn't the way the game works right now. But I, I, would, I would ask this board, let's work it out. Let's, do, let's go to work and, and, and produce a result tonight that at least everybody feels like we took action for everybody. Can we, can we try that? Yeah. Um, I agree with what you're saying. And to continue on with what I was saying, when everybody spoke tonight, extra duties were one of the things that is, is a big concern to teachers. The classroom size, and you feel like you're overworked. A four-day week isn't necessarily going to alleviate all of those because your duties are still there. So where is the compromise? Where is the collaboration and thinking outside the box? You know, what is it? Do we have the, the five-day calendar and find some sort of administrative support for teachers to do some of the extra things that that bog them down? Is it having, taking the, uh, what did you call the Wednesday? Wacky, wacky Wednesday? Yeah, wonky Wednesday. Wonky Wednesday. Taking Wacky Wednesday and making it a, a feel good Friday. <laughs> um, there's PLCs every Wednesday. I get mixed results on whether they're really effective at this point or not. Is it necessary to have a PLC every single Wednesday? It, could it be twice a month, once a month? I don't know. This is where we need to toss around some ideas where we can implement some, some sort of relief. We're, we're listening to what you say, but it's not, an, as Dan's saying, it's not an all or none proposition here. We need to work together. How much so. time, Superintendent Dolezal, do we have to approve this calendar? Like, what's, what's the crossover? I don't think there's a specific, sorry, Member Moore, I don't think there's a specific deadline or anything like that. I mean, other than I do think it's important for our community and our parents to have some knowns. Um, Vacations, I Which is it. where talking about start and end dates, talking about those things in terms of moving forward, uh, even for the staff to have some of those knowns. Within that... Um, again, so is it is it a start is it a structure? Is it a start and end dates? And within that, 
Uh, there is a group that I talked about in terms of looking at what are creative things, what are things like moving a day at the end of a vacation so teachers don't have to spend all their time over vacation doing so. Maybe that's a professional day when they come back, um, that kids are not there, so we're talking about that. Again, I, th I think there are a plenty of possibilities. Um, I think one of my favorite sayings from, from the Chinese philosopher is amongst the chaos there is opportunity. I think there are opportunities here um, that are able to be implemented without the risk. You're talking about every 1% of an enrollment loss is $250,000. I agree. There's a concern there. Now, um, now is it, do we have to approve a three-year or can we approve a one-year? Again, uh, I'm new to this. It, so it is up to it is up to the board. You can do whatever you would like. Oh. Again, I I think having a known structure and a, and a timeline again to to plan things out. Um, so again, that would be my recommendation. But you absolutely have the authority to to approve a three year, to approve a two year, to approve a one year, to approve that with coming back. I actually think that we should not wait every three years, which is what I talked about. It shouldn't be every three years that we're talking about a calendar. It should be every year. Um, so a specific committee that's dedicated strictly to that, and that is their sole purpose, um, I think is critical because I do think there are, there are compromises and there are things that we can do that do not put us, that accomplish giving teachers time, that accomplish giving them back, along with some of the other goals and some of the other work that's being done in order to take away the inefficiencies, which then free up dollars. Um, again, I believe looking at the research, looking at what we're, what, we're, what we're doing, what's coming forward, that there is opportunity to free up some of those things to get the possibility of, of increased compensation for our staff, not just our teachers, but all staff. Um, I agree. But that takes time. Yeah, and, and, I and think it's not a snap your fingers and it's going to happen right now. It is a time. It is a process. Um, and I think that possibility is absolutely there. If I did not think it was possible, then I would not have made the recommendation that I made this evening. So now. <clears throat> I don't know. Uh, what we were presented with from the calendar uh, committee last time was the five day that we have now and the four day that has been talked about and bandied about for the last month. And that was it. That was the only two options. There was no, and even that, there was a lot of questions. I mean, if it hadn't been for a lot of the conversations that I was having, uh, like with, Ms. with Dr. Jensen, I probably wouldn't have known a lot of the answers either. Um, so member Fortney, do you want because Dr. Jensen led the group that met multiple times over months to where there were other possibilities explored, talked about. So I don't know if, if you want that information, I can have her give it to you or well, if you tell me. There is this problem of it being all or nothing. And the way things are kind of, you know, I can read a room as much as anybody, I, so I can kind of see where things are going here. Um, and I don't think that's going to be real helpful to uh, the staff. So I think that we should at least find out about some of the possibilities that we can do that is in between that five day and the four day. I mean, I don't, I, I, I understand it. And I, and I'm, kind of, I'm with you guys. Uh, but is this going to pass? I don't know. Um, so is it possible then that the calendar committee or if there's this other committee uh, that can get together for a little while since it's not like we, you know, like a budget thing where we have to have it by a certain date to get back together and explore some of these options and then present them to us so that we can make maybe a better, more informed decision that is not black or white. Is that a possibility? It is a possibility. We can do whatever it is the board directs us to do, so I, I just need direction from the board. I would like to direct that we table the vote today and have 
another calendar proposal come up at the next board meeting, either the December 3rd or the other December 1, after we get more information based on future plans that we have from the Facilities Committee. Um, if there's funding available there, this count, these options came about because of IBN that came in the beginning of the year because we're of the lack of funding for our staff. Um, we're, everybody's trying to be creative and I appreciate that. Um, and again, right now it's a us versus them mentality and I think some compromise. If we're gonna ma be making changes across the district, um, the calendar is just a little piece of that and I feel like they kind of go hand in hand and probably should, there should be a little bit more creativity around the calendar since it came up anyways. Um, um, so that's my, I would like to bring forth a different calendar. My only uh, comment to that is with the kind of information that we most likely would be looking for, I'm not sure that it could be reasonably compiled um, by December 10th. We do have Thanksgiving oh. between now and then. Yeah. I'm going to throw down the gauntlet and say it can, yeah. number one. <laughs> number two, I, so too. I mean, let's get drivers in the room and go. All right, let's go. Like, I really genuinely believe we, we got to get the right people in the room having the right conversations, and it's time to get uncomfortable and get to a resolution. And by the way, I mean, learning more things, knowing what I know now, I'd be like, well, we need to do one-year calendars because it's a negotiation tool for everybody. It helps us set the stage where our district, and we can move the needle that, that – tempers the the season and i guarantee you we're in for a few seasons and remember more i would just again i would want to reiterate the importance of actually having an elongated period of a knowns and again whether those knowns are just start and end dates and those things and within that on a given yearly basis there are wiggle room there's negotiation there is where are we giving where are we taking um back and forth um well, but I, I would be remiss without at least saying you know when a larger structure, but then smaller structures in between. When you're planning for a school year, like we're in 2024-25, but you're already planning 25-26. Absolutely. In this, so I understand the point in time. So, so, but but let's, be, let's be honest with one quick thing. Have we been allotted the time? Have what? Yeah. No, as a board, no, no, I'm saying you. as a board, we haven't been allotted the oh. time. We got, we got presented. We had 30 days. We were scrambling to make phone calls, listen to emails, take in, endure the information. I mean, on top of the craziest campaign you've ever seen, uh, in an election season for the school board. I mean, that was wild. Um, I, I think we've got to take a second and come back with something that's fundamental that mm -hmm. gives that win. And I don't know what the right committee is for you. But I, I'm thinking the board has to participate this time. Can you say more about the, you mentioned the new dedicated calendar committee. Could you tell us more about what your thought process is, if you had a timeline in mind? And I like what Member Moore said. We would love to be at least a fly on the wall to listen because it is very difficult to show up here at a meeting, be presented with something with a somewhat hostile crowd um, and have to, you know, try to make a decision and feel like, uh, oh, did I, did I catch all that? Like in one sitting? Yeah. Well, a couple of things. Um, number one, again, I can, I, I believe we can do things that, that decrease our costs and put us in a shape to, to compensate better in the short term. Um, so what that would look like is a group that is coming and strictly dedicated to within this calendar, looking at where are the compromises, where are the things, uh, Again, I don't want to dictate what it is. Um, you know, the, uh, we put together a group to, to be a think of what if around a calendar. Um, I believe this board would, would encourage us and continues to want us to get groups of people together that are thinking what if, or thinking possibilities. Um, if that's not the case, let me know. Um, but again, simple things like providing days after vacations where teachers, um, I know what I used to do, I know what I did as a principal. Uh, I know what my wife does. I know what many of the people do on vacation times when they're getting ready for school. So what are those things we can do? Um, you know, do we look at, 
You know, we might decrease to 178 days and have eight professional days so then teachers actually have more time. And where do we put those throughout the year? Do we look at perhaps something? Uh, we can talk about PLCs. I think that group actually discussed the whole Friday shift and those types of things. So some of this work has been done and it wasn't presented because that group didn't feel like shifting to Friday was actually a viable option. Um, in terms of and then in terms of what you said, please remember that as a board, you can call for your own committee. It would follow open meeting laws. You 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 would give me the agenda. We would facilitate the meeting for you. But you can call your own committees as well, and you can direct us to have those types of uh, ongoing conversations. So, I don't know if that answered your question in terms of the purpose of that committee and things they would be looking at, but it would be that type of thing in terms of what do we look at for days, where do we look at dropping, how can we give, how can we afford more time in different ways that perhaps is not there. So I'm going to ask I'm gonna the board. finish with that is, did you have a timeline in mind of pulling this group together and having something new to present to us? Uh, I would actually have the director of student services start pulling it together as soon as a calendar was passed. Uh, the, you know, the framework is passed and all of that. Um, then, I mean, that's where the calendar committee is traditionally sat is with the director of student services and looking at all those different things. Y yeah, so I would say two points to throw to my fellow board members. One, either A, we initiate committee and execute quickly and try and land the plane in December, or B, charge Superintendent Dolezal to come up with a menu that we can select off of to accommodate some type of a calendar that would be supplemental for one year to try and learn what we need to do. Because at the end of the day, we're still guessing. But the, but the only way to move forward is an MVP, minimal viable product. We do it in software all the time. Because you don't know what you don't know, and we do the same things. We go get a bunch of stats, we do our research, and we try to deliver to a client, but we always miss. We miss because we built too much. So my thought process would be one year, try something. You give us the menu. Here are the following things. You can do these things that fall within the guidelines. And then we go, okay, we think that this will accommodate and hopefully retain our teachers and show them that we're actually taking action because we do believe you and we need you. And you are the extension to our children. So if I'm following the board norms, it's student first. But with the student, they may be first, but the teacher is that push behind them. So I hear you. So one of two options tonight, which still leads to a push of sorts. Okay. So you're, are you asking? I'm asking you guys. To call a board committee? I'm presenting two options. A, either A, we call committee and we do the work and try and land this in December because I feel like that's mm -hmm. where it's going to land. Or B, we ask Superintendent Doles all to come back with a make it your way menu and we pick from the selections to accommodate what we know based on the conversations and emails that we've been provided. I think that's fair. I think on the, on the same note, parents had two options options um at the last board meeting and same for staff i mean um so i would like to see a compromise i guess i'd kind of put it back i don't know that you can answer but um I, jamie i think it was you that you know talked about let's have let's be creative are are you the teachers specifically who spoke and anyone else are you open to having us be there with you because we want to listen. Remember, on the point of point of order, we can't have it. You can't have a discussion okay. with. Never mind. The audience here. There could be other ways in that, but. So. At least it wasn't me. If so, as I understand it, there are other t intangibles. There are other things that were discussed that. Dr. Jensen, you are at least aware of peripherally or that somewhere in, in there. Um, but then it really just kind of came to these two. So I don't know about the, the menu thing because I don't know exactly how that would work on a vote. You know, would, you, know two, you know, two votes win. If the other three just said one, that would be kind of weird. So we'd have to at least understand it a little bit better and have it a little bit narrowed. Um, but if the, 
the teachers that spoke so well are in, are interested in moving this process forward and something that will help them. Uh, I would definitely rather see that than feel that we walked out of here and went, sorry. Uh, so I guess um, if we can continue this discussion along with the other things that are roaring towards us down on this freeway here um, and have that stuff, you know, start to be presented too, then we can at least make a little bit more decisions that the teachers are going to maybe be a little bit more comfortable with than rather than just go, sorry, it's five days and we'll talk to you again in three years. So, um, yeah, that's, no, I'm, I'm a definite advocate for having some more information in order to make an informed decision because it's not fair to anyone to vote either or. There is no compromise in either or. Correct. Um, so what I'm hearing is, and tell me if I'm wrong, that we're gonna, you, you would like to table and then a committee, is it, are we going, is there a thought about the board requesting the committee or are we leaving that up to Mr. Dole is all because we need a motion. Well, the, the board committee is a little bit more involved, like he said. There's mm -hmm. the open meeting laws, there's the minutes, mm -hmm. there's all the other stuff that would be involved in that. So if we can have some of the players that were involved in the original calendar thing return and maybe some of these other very well-spoken folks uh, providing their input. And again, from, the, from all angles, uh, the parents again, you know, like I said, we got pro and con from the, from the parents, uh, pro and cons from the staff. So get these folks back together and see, is there something? And if it comes out that, nope, that's it. It's four days or five days. That's what we came up with. And we can't really come up with any kind of compromise between that, then so be it. But I think that at least to not just slam the door on this thing, uh, we have to at least be willing to have that and then we can be you know involved in it as much as we can get our updates from it as much as we get from all the other things and then we at least to have a little bit more information before we finally vote on this thing and December is not bad we could probably do this in December okay so how about if we amend the motion to table this and President Busby, you wouldn't actually amend the motion. You would just make a motion to table the to table okay, the item. I'm making a motion to table this. So moved. Is there Second. A, all in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Now, do we President need to make Busby, a motion? President Busby, I would again, if we can finish some type of clarification in terms of uh, what you're looking for, and then guidance on what specific questions are you looking for answers for. Um, that would. Otherwise, again, we may just be shooting in the dark as opposed to hitting the target that you're asking for. So if, if that could be provided, whether it's in this meeting now, that would be fabulous, or if it's uh, in a follow-up and, and you send... How about if we send, because we're not really agendized to be... Correct. Sending, the, to have that specific... So one other question is, do we have to do something for the committee? So we Is that a separate thing? ...to um, Still new. provide... Our thoughts by email to Mr. Dolas. Okay. Okay. Thank um, you. Okay. So we're going to leave that one there. Item 7.1 upcoming calendar events presented by Mr. Dolas. Thank you, President Busby, Governing Board members. Uh, to everyone, please check your calendar for upcoming winter sports events as our student athletes take the court in basketball, the pitch in soccer, and the mat in wrestling. Uh, and the floor as well in uh, palm and dance and cheer. Uh, reminder, Thanksgiving break is November 27th through 29th. All schools and offices will be closed. Happy Thanksgiving. I am truly grateful to be part of CCUSD. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone. And item eight, adjournment. Is there a motion? motion. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. We are adjourned. It is 7.56.
cabinet meeting tomorrow.